Good morning. We are happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we celebrate the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. These are today's announcements. Grief Share will meet this Wednesday, July 22nd at 7 p.m. in the Parish Center. Don't forget to come to the Churchwide Informational Meeting this Friday, July 24th at 7 p.m. in the Parish Center. St. Joseph's is currently considering a capital campaign to raise funds needed to build a chapel and learning resource center at the school, install carpet and loop system for hearing impaired in the church, and new windows in the rectory. Please see insert in today's bulletin for more information. Everyone is cordially invited and encouraged to attend. The baccalaureate mass for the senior graduates will be held on Sunday, July 26th at the noon mass. Father Worth is the celebrant for this mass, and I am Jeff Boggan, your lector. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome today as we celebrate the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray together the Gloria. 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are a master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you You are are good good and and forgiving. forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in kindness to all who call upon you. Hearken, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the sound of my pleading. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. You alone are God. Lord, Lord, you are are good good and and forgiving. You, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in kindness and fidelity. Turn toward me and have pity on me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, Lord, you you are are good good and forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slave said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds. Yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables I will announce what is laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, the good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected to be burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Where have the weeds come from? Do you want us to go and pull the weeds up? No, let them grow together until harvest. This parable today of the weeds and the wheat, uh, I think is is a, a, it's a great analogy that helps us understand because, well, because weeds are awful. as, uh, as anyone who knows who gardens or all of our farmers know, uh, weeds interfere with the growth of what's supposed to grow, whether that be the wheat or your vegetables in your garden or even grass in a lawn, right? Uh, uh, several weeks ago, I was out here uh, in our, between our, our church and our rectory in front of the Mother Teresa Hall, and I decided I was going to pull some weeds, and I pulled uh, enough to fill two grain shovels. Uh, and that still barely made a dent. Um, 
Father Wilhelm has been uh, working against the weeds in his garden. Uh, as I think he's mentioned in a few homilies, uh, he's trying to work his vegetable garden this year, and um, we, he has to go out and weed. I help sometimes, but he does most of the work. Uh, and of course, our farmers know, uh, as this parable is, the weeds amongst the wheat. And so we, we spend a lot of effort getting rid of weeds. Which makes it a little odd today in our gospel we hear the reply, should we pull up the weeds? No. Let them grow together until harvest. And we see in this parable that the, the weeds, that the wheat is, he calls them the children of the kingdom, or you could say that's the good, the good people, the good things of this earth. The weeds are the children of the evil one, or the, they're the, the evildoers, or maybe just, you could say in general, the evils of this world, right? And here we have both of them, the good and the evil, side by side, growing up together until the harvest. And we like, might be like the servants. We might say, why should we allow them to grow together? Why don't we just get rid of the weeds? And so all we have is wheat. Get rid of the evil, so all we have is is good. This is probably one of the toughest questions we encounter in this in our life. Uh, theologians uh, come up with a fancy title. They call it the problem of evil. But for us, with not using fancy words or terms, might come think might come in the form of a question like, "Why do bad things happen to good people?" Or why, if God is good, does he allow bad things to happen? And why doesn't God just get rid of the evil? Why doesn't he just get rid of the evildoers or just uproot the weed and be done with it? And we know this has been a struggle from the beginning. If you can remember your uh, book of Genesis uh, way back in the beginning, after Adam and Eve sinned, we're looking at the second generation of humanity we have the two brothers, Cain and Abel, right? And Cain, out of jealousy, kills his brother Abel. And does God immediately smite Cain and say, I'm not going to tolerate this evil, I'm going to get rid of it? No. He allows Cain to live. And in fact, he even offers protection to Cain. Cain lives out the rest of his life. Why does God allow evil to, to live alongside the good? Why does he allow the weeds to live alongside the wheat? Well, we can offer a couple uh, answers to that. Uh, one of them comes in our first reading today from the Book of Wisdom. He says, But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. And later it says, you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. So in one sense, those who do evil are allowed to continue because of that hope that maybe they will repent. God's giving them the chance to come to him, to come to him to repent of their sins. Uh, now, whether they do so or not is, is, is up to them, but he, God in his goodness and his mercy is giving them the chance in the gospel, the, the, the owner says, no, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. To our great surprise, one we thought, a person we might thought was a weed, might end up repenting, and in the end, at harvest time, might be wheat, worthy of being gathered into the barn. Or, of course, we know vice versa, right? The wheat could turn out to be a weed. Uh, but there's that mercy of God that, that's giving the time for those to repent. And for, even, and for us too, when we sin, we're given the time to repent and come before God and forgiveness. Or another answer we could look to for this problem of evil could be what we find in some of the gospel stories. Uh, I call it stories of great reversal. Uh, the best example is the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Do you remember that one? The one where they've got this fabulously rich man, they've got tons of food, rich, rich uh, clothing, 
And then he's got this poor man named Lazarus sitting at his doorstep. But after both of them die, Lazarus is with Abraham in God's blessings, and the rich man is in torment. And he complains about it, but Abraham says, you had good things in your life, now you are in torment. Lazarus had terrible things, he had evil things in his life, now he is consoled. And so we know that for us who are faithful, who who believe in God and who are children of God, whatever evils we encounter in this world are going to be repaid in the next. We'll be able to, uh, there'll be the good that we receive in the next will outweigh the evil we receive in this life. Now those are two good textbook answers to the problem of evil. But ultimately, when we're in the midst of evil, a textbook answer is not very satisfying. When we're there, when we're actually experiencing the evils of this world, when we're we're looking out at the world generally and we see war, we see senseless violence, we see disease, we see um, racism, all these evils in the world, and we see that and we try to look up a nice little theolo- you know, we ask a theologian to give us an answer for it, it doesn't satisfy because we're experiencing the evil. Even more so when the evil's just, just, not just general, but when it's hitting us personally. When, you're, when you have a friend who has just received a cancer diagnosis, or when, you, when you've experienced a tragic death, someone who died before their time, or whether it's financial woes or job difficulties and you're, you're worried about providing for yourself and your family, when you're in the midst of difficulties like that and you can put a blank and insert whatever is in your life, a textbook answer doesn't satisfy. It doesn't speak to the evil that you're experiencing now. It doesn't speak to what's in your heart. What do you do when you're experiencing the evil of the world? What do you do when you're surrounded by the weeds of the world. Brothers and sisters, it's not enough for us to know the textbook answers. It's not enough for us to know that God loves us, like it's an answer and a fill-in-the-blank question. We need to know the God who loves us. We need to know the person of God, the one who actually loves us, not just as some abstract concept in the clouds, but as a person we can talk to, as a person we can come to in our need and our difficulties when we're experiencing evil. We need to know God, and we need to invite him into our hearts and into our lives. And there's three ways I I want to, well, three or kind of four ways I want to mention how to do that Uh, in this homily. First of all, if you've been away from God or if you've not made God that true priority in your life, I invite you to come before him in the sacrament of confession. It's a beautiful sacrament because with confession, what we can do using the priest as that minister of God, we can lay before God all that muck and evil. We can lay all before God that stands between us and him, all our sins, all the mistakes we've made, uh, all our struggles and difficulties, we've sent, we lay them all out there before God and we ask for his forgiveness and his grace. And we get cleansed of our sins and obstacles between us and God fall away in that sacrament. And so I encourage you, if it's been a while since you've been to confession, especially since this coronavirus has prevented many of us from getting to confession, to consider bringing, your, bringing yourself before God in that sacrament and opening your heart in that sacrament to receive God, and to remove obstacles. Second, one I I suggest is Holy Communion. And you here who are here at St. Joseph's today uh, are going to receive Holy Communion at this Mass. Uh, I encourage you, because it's very tempting just to go through the motions, right? You know, the body of Christ, amen, receive and walk away. But I encourage you to receive Communion today intentionally. In your, using your mind, bringing your mind and heart to Jesus in communion. Perhaps when you're, you know, three people back in line to ask Jesus and make a little prayer, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. I believe you are here in the Blessed Sacrament. I don't just want to receive you as a matter of routine, but I want to receive you into my heart. 
and to get to know you better. And for those who are unable to receive communion, especially those who are, are watching via Facebook, to know we have this practice of spiritual communion. Although you can't receive Jesus physically in the sacrament today, you can still make that same prayer. And we'll pray a spiritual communion prayer before, uh, before communion time at this Mass, but to even make in your heart while the others are receiving communion on this, uh, while you're at home, to make that prayer, Jesus, come into my heart. Be with me. I want to get to know you. Be with me. And then lastly, I, I encourage you to invite God into your heart during your personal prayer. When you're not in this church building, but when you're at home or, or when you're living your daily life, invite Jesus in. Invite God in. Uh, perhaps you do so by, at the end of your day, you just review your day with God and say, God, here are the things that were great in this day, here are the things I want to thank you for, but here are the things that I struggle with. Here are the evil. Here are the weeds of the day. And this is what I struggled with. Inviting God into those, uh, into that part of your life. Or maybe it's to pick up the Bible and read a bit of Scripture. And I suggest the Gospels, because that's where we encounter the person of Jesus, right? We want to get to know Jesus. We can read about him in the Scriptures, but not just read, because the Scriptures aren't limited to the, pages, the words on the page. But to maybe take a short passage uh, and read it over a couple times, maybe just five, ten minutes, uh, noticing anything that catches your intention, trusting the Holy Spirit to lead you, because it's a form of prayer, and asking when you pray that, say, I want to get to know you better, Jesus, as I read your Gospels. Brothers and sisters, in this world of weeds and wheat, of, of evil and good, we need God. We need him in our lives. We need to know him and to know his love for us. And so let us invite our God today into our hearts and into our lives. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of God, for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in God as our Father, let us bring to him our prayers and petitions. For our Pope Francis, and for his monthly intention for July, that today's families may be accompanied with love, respect, and guidance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local, state, national, and world officials 
who are responsible for dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequences, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our farmers, as the harvest season draws near, may they be able to harvest the fruit of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our eighth grade graduates from our St. Mary's Academy Middle School, may God bless them and guide them as they continue their faith journey into high school. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who have donated to the St. Mary's Chapel and Learning Resource Center addition to our St. Joseph Catholic School and Religious Education Center, and that we may be able to finish this project by the generosity of our people and alumni. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in our parish, for Father Loudon Flisk, and for Math and Catherine Berg, whom this Holy Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, who, whose spirit intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings, hear and answer the prayers we bring before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. As we enter into the Liturgy of the Eucharist, if I can ask, is there anybody present here who, to receive Holy Communion, would be unable because of gluten intolerance to receive the precious body, but would have to receive the precious blood? If so, raise your hand high. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, and all the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. As we have been doing for these past several weeks for Holy Communion, I, I ask you to please come up the side aisles for Communion uh, and to, uh, to keep that six-foot distance between you and the group or person in front of you uh, in order to respect that, um, that distance and uh, the, the desire to protect each other from any potential of the, the coronavirus. Uh, also, we have hand sanitizer stations available for you to use as you approach especially if you're going to receive in the hand. Uh, our automatic pumps have been problematic. So we have uh, good old-fashioned uh, hand pumps. So to pl please, uh, uh, if you don't have your own, to use the hand sanitizer stations as you come forward. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are, are watching via Facebook or anybody who is unable to receive Holy Communion today, we, in, we invite you to make a prayer of spiritual communion. And if you wish, you may join me as, as, and as, I, as I pray this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you. The body of Christ. May Almighty God bless you. The body of Christ. 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 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ may Almighty God bless you the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Uh, for this, uh, at, new, at the noon Mass today, we are having our graduation ceremony for our 8th grade graduates. The first 8th grade graduation we've had since we added St. Mary's Academy Middle School to our St. Joseph's Church, so, or St. Joseph's School. So we, we celebrate with them today. I invite all of you uh, here and at home to, to say a prayer for our 8th grade graduates as they celebrate this day. And that Mass will also be streamed live on Facebook. So anyone who wishes to, uh, to join our 8th graders via Facebook uh, may do so. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank mm-hmm. you.